I just saw in a violent nature, and if you think my films are slow, then boy, do I got a treat for you. The film puts the viewer in the back seat of a killer as he walks, walks, and walks around, killing people in the process. The film is told from the perspective of the killer. He's one of those like Jason types where there's like a supernatural twist. Basically, you're following an 80s slasher killer, and the victims pretty much play into those trope like characters of those films. The film lives in a world of nature without much dialogue, but when we do get dialogue, it's basically exposition dumping or just stereotypical slasher dialogue that's honestly kind of as fitting with the film as it is cringe and cheesy. Most of the performances delivering these lines are pretty awful for the majority of the film, and the film tries to play an analogy towards the end that I don't think worked very well with the story presented here. However, where the film has some drawbacks, it makes up for with some truly masterclass filmmaking that will make In a Violent Night a repeat watch for me and a new personal favorite. First off, this is one of those films that I'm mad I didn't make. This is exactly the type of film I want to make. The film isn't afraid to literally just walk with the killer. There's long scenes of just walking from point A to point B to point C where you just follow along. This allows the film to build its atmosphere but also puts the viewer in the cold emotional state as the killer. Nothing here builds to be overly exciting, nothing here is to make you jump, but rather somewhat going through the motions with the killer, which honestly added a level of gruesomeness and brutality that I've been missing from some recent outings. The film looks beautiful. Most of the film is on a steady cam following behind. There are some just gorgeous looking shots in this film. With that being said, there's definitely some noticeable stabilizing. I'm not sure if it's all digital stabilizing or maybe some in camera stabilizing to help make the steady cam smoother, but that's what it looks like to me because there's a lot of warbling going around the sides of the frame. This is super noticeable in the overhead shot and the car scene where the warbling is pretty much just going nuts. There's also a few times where the camera just kind of spazzes out that felt very unintentional, but again, there are some really gorgeous shots. I love the choice to never have a score, but instead using diegetic music that didn't really sound that diegetic. The sound design is a mixture of great and terrible altogether. The Foley effects are amazing. There's a scene towards the end that the sound design I thought was personally really great. However, there's a lot of moments where dialogue is way too clear for the perspective. Unless it's going for like that kind of like supernatural hearing kind of thing, it's very obvious that it was either ADR or lapeled. There's a scene towards the beginning where the killer is walking up on two men and you can hear them crystal clear despite the perspective but one vocal track is hotter and more clear than the other where the other sounded kind of further away as the killer approaches then we have a hard jump where the audio flows uninterrupted and continues naturally i thought at first that this was a pretty noticeable mistake but then as the film went on i was kind of wondering if the film was playing with the idea of how these killers just kind of walk everywhere but are always close behind so the dialogue continues as it should be while the killer is somehow jumping closer in a way however However, the film never does this again. There is in this film though two scenes that I honestly think are some of the best kills I've seen on screen ever before. They were so seamless that I honestly hope that the home release has some like good behind the scenes scenes or something like that because I just want to know how they did it. <laughs> I'm not going to say what they are or what the scenes are because I don't want to spoil anything but both were amazing and honestly just worth the price of the ticket alone. There's also a kill that made me audibly laugh in the theater that was insanely comical but gruesome as well which was kind of nice because I thought the entire scene leading up to that was honestly led by one of the worst performances I've seen all year. I don't know. This is just, this film is just made for me kind of movie. It's just a made for me kind of movie. I adore the pacing, the aesthetic, and the atmosphere of the film. Oh, giving me some truly outstanding moments that I honestly can't wait to see again. I'm giving this one an 8 out of 10. If you want to follow me for more reviews, you can press that subscribe button. If you want to support what I do, you can also consider becoming a member or Patreon. Thank you. Bye.